Hello, everyone, and sorry for the well, couple of minutes delay that we had this time. Um, I hope you are all well. Um, could you please um, let me know that you are hearing me okay? If you can say something in the chat so that I know. Great. Looks like everyone is hearing. Thank you so much. So, um, welcome all to our this month's Customer Insights webinar session. Um, like always, we will record this session and you will receive the recording, the link to the recording after the session. And we will also post this video to our YouTube channel if you want to share it to your colleagues. I'm Rina. I'm your host today. Um, you, some of you maybe have seen me before. Uh, still working from home, uh, but we are slowly um, getting back to more normal here in Finland. I wanted to um, this time <laughs> take a picture where you can see some of our new, like latest architecture here in, in Finland, in Helsinki, Finland. Behind me, you can see our new uh, public library, which is a really nice building. It's called Audi. Our agenda today. So we have case modelico, quality beyond clash detection, and some demo uh, is prepared as well in the session. So we have uh, Sara Isabaya from Modelico and, and Julio Garcia should be joining as well. And they will be talking about quality assurance in residential projects, how they use Solibri to check property content in their BIM models, and how they use information takeoff and classification for room quantities calculations with furniture, lighting fixtures, or MEP appliances. We also have reserved some time for your questions in the end. So please send any questions you have any time of during the session you can send those in the chat. Uh, it will help us a lot if you also mention who your question is for, if it's for uh, Uli or Zara in Modelical or is it for more for us in Solibri. Uh, so when we start going through the questions it, it helps a little bit for us to handle them. Um, before uh, we start the actual session we have a poll we would like to ask you this time um, how, how the IFC models are created in, in your projects. So you should be able to see the poll now. I'll give you a few minutes to answer. So what is the main modeling tool you are using in your organization when, when you create the IFC models? Let's see how it goes. Looks like Revit is getting a lot of answers. Many people are using Archicad as well. I'll wait a couple of minutes more. All right. Thank you for all your replies. So let me share how it looks. So maturity is using Revit, uh, Archicad also a lot. And many of you are receiving the models from, from the designers, but it's very interesting to see this, these results. Thank you very much for your replies. All right. But now to the actual uh, agenda of today. So we have the presentation from uh, Sara in, and, and uh, Julio. So I will give uh, now Sara the floor just a second.
Hello. Um, Hello. And thank you, Sarai, for, for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I don't know if you are saying my my screen already with a presentation or are you seeing my desktop? Desktop. Or, uh, desktop, okay. So I will change this. So now uh, you are seeing my presentation. So um, good morning to to everyone or good afternoon. I don't know if you are in Europe or not. Uh, and thank you to the people in Solibri for having us uh, this this morning. Um, as uh, Rina said, uh, the presentation is going to be um, held by by me, Sarai, and by Julio. Julio is having some troubles to join us and I hope he can join because uh, the, the, the second part of the presentation, the most pr practical thing uh, was going to be to be led by him. So if not, uh, we are just going to, to have a um, a brief uh, theoretical thing. So, but first, um, a brief presentation about us, about Modelical, uh, and then we are going to to talk about Revit exhortation, as we saw just now with the with the poll that that uh, Rina sent you. Revit is the most popular tool to work with BIM, but um, of course we have uh, we have in mind that uh, there are other authoring tools that you're using, and because of that, the, the sample is going to be performed or explained based in in Revit options, but but this is something that you should um, uh, expand or yes uh, apply to to other other tools uh, i'm going to talk uh, briefly about um, bone collector to see that um, a little tool that we have developed containment elements in the ifc models and this practical part that julio is going to show us if if possible so we are a small company uh, we are like 30 people based in Madrid in or in Barcelona. We have two offices, but the main office is in Madrid. We are uh, all, uh, in any case, we are all based in Spain. And uh, the team is, is formed by architects, engineers and software developers. And we like to say that we work in this intersection or yeah, in between space, uh, between or among uh, uh, architecture, engineering, and and software, and also now that is uh, in mode this digitalization thing. So we we started just with BIM, but now is is we we have expanded to to everything related to, to BIM and construction. We have uh, a, lot of, um, a, lot of, a lot of clients, depending on, uh, on where you are. You may know some of, of these clients. Some, have, some are very big enterprises like Inditex. Uh, you may know uh, for sure Zara or some of the brands of Inditex, and if if not, you for sure you you know FCB, Football Club Barcelona or Real Madrid. Sadly, we we cannot talk a lot about um, big projects or these client projects because we are under these NDAs. Uh, that are restricting us from from that, but yes, we have been working or are working for this type of clients, uh, yeah, and in in 
in complex and, and big projects. Our services uh, from just BIM production to training to strategic integration, project information management, facility management, and software development. Because we really believe in, in authoring tools and using the, the tools that are already available to everyone. But when we don't find uh, the, the specific tool that, that we need to perform something, you, we just create it. That's why we have some uh, software engineers uh, in the team because they they help us to develop anything we we need in our relation with any other BIM BIM tool. So, how do we use Solibri? Well, as as uh, as we have seen, um, uh, each of you is using a different BIM software or authoring tool from Revit to Archicad, Tecla, or um, from Nemetech or Civil, or I don't know. We mostly use Revit because. Uh, just and just because uh, most of the clients are using Revit, but we are not uh, like tied to Autodesk. We use any tool that that serves to to the purpose that we want to achieve. Then, uh, normally, if we are going to use Solibri. That is our preferred tool for, for coordination. We will export from any other software to IFC. As you know, IFC is the, the open format files to, to perform this, this coordination. Then we integrate all these IFCs in, Solib in Solibri for checking and we'll share normally we we, we use uh, beam collab but there are any other a lot of other web uh, platforms or plugins that uh, could serve you to do this uh, sharing part of of the of the of the process so when we have been through all this first loop after sharing, so let's say we go back to the native models, fix any problem that, that we have uh, found, or uh, ask the ask the, the the different teams to fix any pro uh, coordination issues or information issues that we ha may have found. Um, with this web platform like the hub for for control or the control of the these processes and we go with the loop again we will export to ifc again update models in solibri memory of of what was and what is in the ifc models is maintained somehow in the solibri models and then we'll share again with any team the issues found and, and the problems found in the federated models. So go back to the models again and the loop starts and over and over. Um, let's speak a bit about the Revit IFC export. Uh, since Solibri is just using uh, IFC models, it's very important to have it clear how do we export from IFC, or yeah, from Revit, or from Archicad, or from Tecla. So I tried, I'll try to explain this, uh, these particularities of the IFC export 
not just centering in how we export uh, from Revit, but of course is the, the tool that we we control the most. But but all of you you should have in mind the, the that that's the the important thing. So if you are using Solibri and Solibri is, is, is using IFC models, IFC files are very uh, powerful, but it, only if they are configured or set or exported uh, correctly for the for the goals that you you want to to achieve. So you <clears throat> you should have uh, very clear the IFC schema scheme that you should use and the model um, the MVD yeah, um, with elements and properties that you are going to export. Normally for coordination there is a, MD, a specific MVD for coordination. So that's the, the one that we should use. Uh, that way we will have an export from IFC more with more or less information. So very, very important is how do we set and or configure the mapping file? So how do we match? In the case of Revit, this should be the, the categories, how we match them with IFC classes and IFC types. Is uh, In Revit there are some classes that, classes that are supported and some that are not, so uh, it's important to decide how and um, yeah, how we are going to order everything in the in our models. So every element should go to uh, a specific IFC class, and that class or yeah, that class or type that we are going afterwards to use in the IFC models, and that does not depend on uh, how we are exporting from Revit, from Tecla, from Archicad. We should um, order and organize how every team and from each tool it is going to export so that similar elements from every software are going to to fall in the same IFC class afterwards in the IFC files um, in a way that we can follow the structure in, in a proper in a proper way. Um, there are, uh, the Revit has a built-in exporter and has a, a menu for, for these um, categories and IFC class mappings, uh, but in the end it's just match this element should go to, to this class and we should not forget subcategories or sub-elements should go to any any of these available uh, IFC classes. If not, if we don't do that uh, properly, we won't be able to find or to filter or classify things uh, inside Solibri with the IFC uh, model. Mm, yeah. Uh, other thing that is important and, and, and is explained here in this slide is that um, language in Revit, for example, matters. I don't know, I'm not sure in Archicad or Tecla, for example, but uh, if you mix different languages in the Revit models, um, then you have like uh, like a mess matching categories and IFC classes. You should use just one language and then uh, properly export to to the IFC to the IFC models. Uh, 
of course, the settings are important, not only these class uh, mappings. And with settings, um, we mean it's important location of the IFC files, um, a structure of the information. If we want to export every uh, every property in the in the model that we have, or if we want to select some uh, some specific properties or attributes in the in the model, uh, not important if Revit or Archicad, but our B model to export to to IFC. Uh, Select the correct, like, like I said, the correct um, MVD. In this case, for coordination, usually we should use IFC uh, coordination view and uh, any other export settings that we should uh, have uh, clear what implies having uh, one or another. Uh, in the end, if we save this from the exporter, Revit exporter or Archicad exporter, we could have a TXT or JSON file with uh, these settings to have them available for any other export that we may have to perform. As I said, uh, we have developed uh, a little tool to export, to batch export from, from Revit. That is because uh, exporting from, from Revit to IFC is normally very, very boring. And that's because if you make that native, you should open Revit file, export, way to the model to export and then check that everything is in in order but we as we are working in 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 big projects we didn't have the didn't have the time to wait to open every um let's say every of 80 models big models to export and check and that everything is in place so we have developed uh, this bone collector tool and it's just a, a, a menu to to export to batch export several uh, models without opening it and just setting which uh, export options and export settings we want to to use just a funny thing, uh, this is called Bone Collector, but because we have developed some other tools and we have um, a Denson Washington fan in the office, and that, that that's why we are naming uh, most of our tools after, after Denzel Washington <laughs> movies. Yeah, and with uh, this Revit uh, tool, this Revit add-in, uh, we have the export configuration, the settings, and then we can just select uh, a bunch of, of, of models to export uh, unattended, unattended. So we'll leave the, the, the PC working, and in the next morning you have all your, your IFC uh, exported. Another thing that we normally use uh, is a uh, remote uh, remote and powerful PC to, to do this so we can keep on working with with our PCs in, in other in other things. As I said, it's just which files, which export settings uh, and then just wait to the to the files to be to be exported. Yeah, the the display is very very simple, and as I said, we can program the, the exportation and just leave the the PC or the computer uh, working while we are 
I don't know, having a beer in a, in a terrace. So, um, what's uh, very powerful in, in IFC uh, models exported from Bevit or exported from any other tool are containment elements. Containment elements can be um, many things inside IFC models. Uh, and containment elements um, are called so because we can have um, relations and explore relations between elements inside IFC models. Um, uh, like uh, what is contained uh, within what. And this is very powerful because uh, it gives you a lot of control over the information inside your models. Containment elements could be in a building, just the document itself, the project information, or it could be levels, and we have all clear what levels are in 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 IFC models. Normally, they come from the levels called like just like that from native models, or it could be spaces uh, in any any format that they are called rooms, areas, or MEP zones, spaces. So because spaces, um, uh, wherever they are named, are like these really physical containers of elements. And you can check inside Solibri uh, if elements are inside these, these spaces or rooms. And containment uh, elements are also in case of Revit models, these uh, abstract uh, things that are called the systems, that are the MEP systems, um, based on circuits and piping systems and ducting systems. And this is also very powerful because you can check and control uh, which system one element can uh, is is belonging to. So that's why we call the, the presentation and, and the... Hello, shall I? Hello, Julio. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I hear you. No surprise. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm finishing just with the, this theoretical thing and I... Okay, think, let's uh, see if we can share uh, the practical thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was telling um, uh, every attendee that uh, uh, we rely or we believe a lot of, in containment elements because they are a powerful tool to control information inside our yeah. IFC models. So we have uh, checked that containment elements can be the building, floors, spaces, and systems. And um, yeah, they are depicted or represented in, in IFC models in different ways, but you see that, uh, how these systems, circuits, piping systems, and that systems are uh, named after just an object and number code. And yes, that's our brief presentation of the of our processes working with, with Solibri. Of course, um, there are a lot of, of other things, but Julio is now going to show you in a live uh, way uh, how do we use this. Sadly, as I said before, um, we cannot show you complex and, and yeah, um, super super big project models and we are going to do this this uh, little uh, sample with um, a sample file 
uh, it's a pity. Maybe this is not so colorful like uh, any other samples in other webinars, but uh, we thought that the important thing is this focus on the on the on the power of of controlling and, and doing things with the IFC models containing the proper information. So yes, Julio, everything yours. Well, I can continue, maybe, shall I? Uh, can you yeah. see my screen properly? Yeah. Okay, yes. so this is the model that we are going to uh, export with our, uh, well, with our adding. Uh, I've created two views, uh, the AFC view and the AFC view uh, no walls. And well, uh, our uh, adding is right here in Modelical Rabbit Tools. And we have these two buttons, the export button and the settings button. And uh, I'm going to configure uh, to show you how uh, we configure uh, all these things. So, uh, well, first of all, we give it a name. And uh, then we uh, specify an export folder. Uh, also, we specify uh, an IFC configuration uh, JSON. Uh, and uh, we can set here that the, we, the view filter can be by name or by parameter uh, of the view. And if it's by name, uh, we can uh, set it. Uh, if uh, the view contains IFC, it is going to be exported. And now uh, we add, uh, usually uh, we add a folder here and we click OK, OK, and uh, uh, export. OK, I have to close all the models uh, and go to our adding settings and export. Now it is exporting. So let's see, let's check it out uh, in our desktop, Solibri webinar. And here we have uh, our IFC model. It creates a folder with the now uh, and all the views. Uh, you can check that, uh, well, that all the views in the models, uh, they are export exported. So let's see how they look in Solibri. So let's open Solibri. Also, uh, Sarai uh, well, uh, has told you that we use the uh, task uh, scheduler in order to make this thing uh, automatically. So this is Solibri office, it's opening right now. And uh, usually, well, uh, we export uh, all the models, maybe, uh, well, sometimes on Saturday or something. And I'm going to open these models. San, no, uh, it's the Solibri webinar. And IFC model today. And here we are with the ARC. Architectural model and their the two uh, views and the structural model. So we are going to open it. Okay, here we have our model. So these two from here, they, th these are the architectural ones and this is the, stru the structural one. So I need to set the, the discipline and call it structural and this is the architectural okay and now if we set uh, to selection basket we can see that all the spaces also uh, have been exported if we click uh, alt s we can hide and show the spaces usually i put it in auto uh, graphic mode and uh, click out this things, the footprints and the grids and all these things. And uh, the no walls, you can see that we also have the, the spaces, but uh, with no walls, like in the view. This is because of the properties that we have set in the uh, Revit uh, exported. Uh, you can, you 
that uh, these properties can be uh, easily um, exported. I'm going to show you. We use, uh, we have to open a model, first of all. Uh, we are going to open this model. And uh, you can see that all the properties, uh, the IFC exportation uh, configuration, you can easily export it. And this is the JSON file that we link to our add-in. Options, no, sorry, yes. IFC options, no, uh, the export, a file, export, IFC. Here we have uh, all the modified setup and you can see that, uh, well, we can save uh, the selected setup and we can, well, make all these kind of things, export rooms in 3D views. Remember that uh, if uh, we click this one, export only elements visible in view, uh, we, uh, we are not exporting uh, things like systems or rooms. So uh, well, be, be careful about that. And well, uh, once we have everything uh, set up, uh, we can uh, export this, uh, this JSON. And this is the JSON that we use uh, for uh, setting up the IFC options uh, from the method of export IFC uh, exposed in the Revit API. OK, so uh, well, so now we have, I'm going to remove this one. Now we have this model here and remove from model, okay. And I'm going to set everything to the selection basket and I'm going to uh, show you, uh, well, some rules that we usually uh, use. Uh, I'm going to uh, load them, training, next. Okay. <clears throat> Name is Salibri webinar settings, check demo. Okay. And check demo. So, well, we have uh, the classic uh, hard uh, and soft classes. In this case, uh, well, this example, we have these. Uh, door with no opening that is uh, clashing with the wall and in the soft door clashes we have this furniture which is like pretty uh, much um, in front of the uh, door but there are other things like uh, well uh, columns that uh, don't touch both we can consider this like a well another kind of uh, soft clash uh, soft clash so uh, but uh, we can also check the inconsistent document name format as i uh, has told you uh, that uh, the building elements in the ifc uh, in the ifc model uh, is uh, has uh, all the properties from the project information so uh, we can check all the properties uh, from the model here and also the uh, document name. So now this is components with uh, non-matching ident identifiers. So we can go to the rule parameters and see what kind of uh, regular expression is kind of a regular expression here. And uh, we can see that uh, we can put here another uh, fixed token at this IFC view here, okay, and we run the rule, and now uh, we are uh, okay with this rule. So because of the name of the models here, if we go to the building element and we check the building, uh, this I have to view the properties. Let me open it. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, sorry. What? Checking part. Well, I've uh, put this rule. Uh, I've set up 
this uh, in order to uh, match with the building uh, with, with the document name. So uh, we can also check the space validation rule, which is quite powerful in order to check that every single space has its own uh, spe special element and the uh, inconsistent room parameters and the room content requirements. These rules have to be set up with uh, classification you can see classification not loaded. So if we go to the information takeoff uh, base and add uh, new classifications, I'm going to add sorry, webinar uh, settings. I'm going to add these ones here. Open it. And now, if we check the model, we can see that inconsistent room parameters, what we are doing here is that property name must exist. And if I change this one, and it, it has to uh, contain X, okay. And now I check the model. You can see that we have some failures here and uh, these the terraces of the model uh, and the uh, well this down uh, here this, this spaces here uh, doesn't contain uh, that uh, particular um, expression so and also the room content requirements we can check that uh, spaces has uh, several elements in this case uh, in the parameters, we can see that, uh, well, we, we have set up this with minimum one element and maximum th uh, 30. And we can see that the, in, the, in, the first, uh, in the first result, this, uh, furniture, it's, it has no furniture components. And in this one, we have too much, too many furniture components. If we ch change this parameter, and uh, put zero to 50. Close it and check the model. We can see that in this exterior we have, we've got, well, we have to rerun the test. Too many furniture components, uh, but this is because uh, maybe they are not uh, classificated properly. But this, these are the kind of rules that we use uh, in order to uh, check uh, some uh, con. I don't know if you have. Uh, we have uh, 15 minutes left. Uh, if you have any questions here, you can. Yes. Uh, I, I... Hello. <laughs> I think it's it, it, there is some time for for any questions that you may have, and you can ask us anything you 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 feel. So, thank you, Julia and Sarai, to both of you. Yes, we have already had like uh, there's already some questions coming in. Uh, that we can start now going through. And if you have more questions, to just please feel free to um, send those to the chat. So let me just start looking in, into these. And I'm sharing also this with you, Julian Sarai, if you want to. Okay. Okay. Check. <clears throat> While we wait to the to the questions, it just to some some remarks that we are not talking here in Solbury about um, just um, class class detection. So we can perform that uh, with a bunch of rules of of hard classes and soft classes fast but the thing is that in solibri we can go a bit forward and check actually the information in the models and check relations uh, between elements in the models so maybe with other tools we can not do that but 
since Solibri uh, allows uh, these containment relations, we can we can think of a, a lot of things to 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 check beyond uh, physical physical issues and physical coordination. So, and that's uh, important to to control and to to have um, to have beam models that are actually uh, useful. And when this is about big projects and a lot of, of information, this is really really important. There have been many questions related to this bone collector you you have. Um, first of all, is it something that you can share to others uh, for downloading, or how does it, or is it only yours <laughs> in your organization? <laughs> Normally, uh, we we use that internally. We have shared uh, this tool and all, some others. Normally, with clients in the in the context with with um, the projects that we develop with with them. At some point, we have thought of uh, having them available for the public, uh, open to the public, under some pricing policy or something like that, or free. We don't know, but if you are really really interested you can write us and see what we can do about that. Yeah, but I've tried to explain to you uh, what are the keys to develop it. It's, uh, well, <laughs> the export in the API, which is exposed, and, well, it's, uh, I don't know, you can try it with a macro or something, but, yeah. well, uh, that I have told, uh, you can uh, call us and well ask ask for it. Collector. Uh, okay, yeah. Everything about the uh, bone collector is just at at at, at this time is is a tool for us, but. Of course, we we could we could think about sharing that or with a, a lot of any other tools. We we should think what to do with with them to share them. Uh, question for Sarah: You mentioned you have worked on developed tools for several evaluation models. Um, do you have any tool to address environmental concerns such as CO2 emissions? Uh, not, not yet. We have not come to the to that point. We have uh, uh, certainly we have developed uh, tools, um, tools to control models and to con to control projects. We have compi We are compiling them into just one web or platform tool containing all these tools to have a to have a dashboard and and um, display of these controlling rules about the models and projects and not controlling only these technical and quality things about models but also about projects uh, in a similar way uh, to how we do that in Solibri and based on that, but we have not come to that point to the, the environmental uh, thing yet. We have, we are okay. Uh, I'm going to answer. Experts. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Mike Sitter, uh, why create individual model view instead of an aggregate uh, view of all objects and filter using solidary functions? Well, we have encountered uh, some problems sometimes with uh, huge models, with uh, big models, and also with, uh, for example, for instance, the, the uh, insulations in MEP. Uh, well, uh, it is critical for us to create a view without these insulations, uh, and uh, in order to get a proper uh, exportation. Sometimes the, um, the detail level uh, or uh, the, 
the content of the model uh, makes a good exportation or a bad IFC exportation, or maybe uh, you cannot make an exportation because it crashed. So it's critical for us to um, to configure all these things in Revit first, and then in Revit views first, and then export them. This is this is why I think uh, we create individual views and export them. And well, uh, how did you switch is, to a two D uh... elevation view? Uh, we, you can in in Solibri you can uh, click Control two or Control and a number and you go uh, rapidly to a uh, pure view. Is it possible to see the document name rule? Yeah, you can you can check it. It's the the document name rule. Uh, I'm going to tell you. You have it in the rule set manager and the document uh, is the uh here it is uh, solibri 21 2.3 you have it in the in the solibri common rules solibri 21 2.3 with that rule you can uh, configure it and check the document name rule from the revit model and also the other uh, other parameter with a regular expression uh, check you can you can check it uh, with that rule so now if you want to answer yeah uh, i have a question about navis works i i don't know if this is the correct mm -hmm. forum for navis works but <laughs> yes we we do use navis works sometimes as i said uh in the beginning we are not married or, or committed to to one tool but i, I we think navis works is good for some things but it's limited for uh many other things of course if if i think of, of um, making a 4d model i think first of using now works and not solibri but because solibri is, is more powerful for for other things like um like julio likes to say second round coordination uh, about coordination of information and there is a, another question for me checking on object relation they need to be modeled to be able to do so uh, do we create our own uh, object families we usually do that we create our own families we have our own uh, lib libraries but not always you have to have in mind that we work for for a lot of different clients and and we have to adapt to their standards so it's more about um, knowing how families and how information is contained in that families to create the correct um, relations between elements in 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 models we have still yes. time, I think, for maybe one or two questions. So, and we will answer if if there's something that uh, you didn't get answer for in this session, we will go all the questions through, and uh, send a link where you can find the answers. So yeah. don't worry about that. But yeah, if if there's one more you want to answer now, then we have time for that still. I don't think okay. I have any other. Julio, maybe you. I have a lot. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so, so well, maybe, maybe you we can. Uh, yeah, I'm going to answer one of these. Um, let's see. Uh, this one. How to convert uh, a Revit to IFC correct coordinates? Some some Revit uh, using shared coordinates. Well, mm -hmm. uh, this is a. Uh, big thing. Uh, we, yeah, yeah. Uh, we use uh, we usually use uh, the internal coordinates uh, and then do a, a post processing of these uh, coordinates in Solibri if we have to. If we have to, but uh, I think that the key is to use uh, the internal coordinates and also with the uh, link, uh, linked uh, instances uh, we have find these uh, 
this checkbox in the exportation uh, in the export configuration uh, quite useful uh, uh, do you also use revit dynamo for the parameters in revit models uh, or do you make a specific add-ins for that well we, we use it depends on the uh, amount of parameters or something we have other tools that we consider them like uh, other services that we have, uh, not tools. That's why we um, don't uh, sell them. But, uh, well, uh, some partners use uh, Dynamo, others uh, use uh, other tools. We have several ways to do that. And, uh, okay, I want to... Uh, comment something, uh, Sarai. Uh, yeah. the, in an open beam environment, Solibri is a must, I think. What do you think, Sarai, about this? <laughs> yeah. If the client, if the client uh, asks for open beam and if uh, IFC is uh, in the game, uh, we go usually go uh, through Solibri. I don't know. If yeah, you yeah. Are yeah. Agree with this. <laughs> Great yeah. to hear. Yeah. <laughs> I hey, agree. thank you. <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you to both okay. of you so much um i think we're uh, uh starting to uh run out of time so we will like i said we will go through all the questions you had once more after this session and check if there was something that we didn't answer yet then we will we will get back to you uh later today so don't worry about that okay Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Julian you. Sarai, for the great presentation. Uh, a couple of uh, um, things I wanted to still mention before we end the webinar. So we have a little summer treat for you. Usually we've had uh, these webinars once a month, but now we will have still two more sessions in this month. Uh, so we will have case uh, tech Nikair Engineering, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that, in, in, in after a couple of weeks. And then also uh, Case BIMO Open Innovation uh, in the end of this month. Uh, so a little bit like a summer treat for you before we have our summer vacation break, as we will not have, have sessions in, in July or August. Uh, we will send you links how to register to these webinars after after uh, this session later today to your emails. In addition to those customer insights webinars, we will also have one more session uh, in our Solibri Assist webinar series. Uh, maybe some of you have have attended this. Our expert Ken Good uh, is helping in different areas on, on how to uh, work with Solibri. And this time we will have a session on Autoron. Uh, so Autoron uh, was um, uh, opened to all Solibri Office users in our uh, latest release. So Ken will now share you how to get started with that, how to automate the model federation and run checks and so on with this, this great tool we have. And you will get a link to register to this webinar as well after after the, this session today. So that was it. Thank you so much once more uh, to all of you. Uh, feel free to contact us if you have any more questions or, or, or other concerns. And, and otherwise, I will um, wish you all a great uh, day and hope you're all staying safe. Thank you. <laughs>